Where I would have been without you I'm so glad It's a place I never have to be Even if I tried I couldn't count the ways Not enough for words for me to ever say Just how good, how good you are to me Hey How could I have this joy inside of me Amazing grace, oh Lord, I can't I'm singing like amen.
Good morning, Parkway Church. Great to have you at service today. My name's Dusty. I'm the pastor at Parkway Church and excited to have you in our service today. Uh, there are a lot of people here today. Uh, if, you have, if you have a chair somewhere in the middle that you can squish in a little bit more, that's helpful. But there's not, I can tell right now there's not a lot of space to even do that. Uh, lots going on today. Great things to celebrate. And I uh, want to give you just a few announcements uh, at the start of our service before we begin. Uh, first off, uh, we're really pleased to have uh, the Quinty Christian High School uh, senior, I'm, I'm saying it wrong, the senior band, is that pretty close? Yeah. Uh, leading us in worship today. Let's welcome them. Yeah, they're going to lead us today. And uh, if, you've been, uh, if you've been part of our church over the past few weeks, we've had a busy couple weeks here. We had conference and then Easter. And I really appreciate them coming and leading us and not just filling in. They did a great job leading in first service, but I do appreciate the rest this morning, some of our team and, uh, and them being willing to do that. And uh, so thank you for doing that. We also have a guest speaker today, uh, Pastor Rob McCollum. He's the pastor at Kingston Standard Church. And uh, we are a church plant. We're four or five years in here. We have met at a hotel, at a school, at the Legion, uh, in a field. We've met almost everywhere imaginable before finally landing here and one of the last sort of seasons of our church plant road trip, uh, we really were homeless during the last part of the, the COVID experience as we were building this place. And uh, Kingston Standard and Pastor Rob ho hosted us for services there uh, in the evening, Sunday evenings uh, at, at their church and opened their doors so we could do that. And we really want to thank Kingston Standard for doing that. Absolutely. And... Uh, Wanted to give you a chance. I've had the chance to speak at Kingston Standard a few times. We've sort of swapped back and forth and want to give you a chance to meet Pastor Rob this morning. He's going to be sharing uh, the morning message. So great to have you here today, Pastor Rob. A few announcements. Uh, youth group, uh, age, sorry, grades 6 to 12, resuming this Thursday. We had a ton of teenagers involved in Easter weekend uh, uh, serving there. That was great. We thank you guys for doing that. And yeah, let's do a little clap for them too. Thank you, teenagers. And uh, we've got a, we have a, a hometown hero, homegrown talent in our band this morning, Nathaniel Busby's from our church. He's serving this morning. Let's, let's yeah. clap for him yeah. since we're doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> since, we're, <laughs> since we're doing it, that's great. And I uh, wanted to let you know, uh, this is the last night. We have three teenagers serving in Quinny Youth for Christ, a spirit born production of Esther. Uh, anybody had a chance to see that yet? Lots did. Uh, we sort of fiddle-faddled the announcement up there a few times when they first started. The last show is tonight uh, at Maranatha Church in Belleville at 7 p.m. So if you'd like to be there, it's usually a standing room only, so get there early if you'd like to see the last performance. Three of our teenagers uh, serving there as well. Great things coming up. Camp Day is April 28th at church. Silver Lake Camp will be here during service. And uh, boy, if you have a teenager, a kid, they offer great uh, camps through the summer, and in that service, they are doing a draw for a free week of camp. Uh, if you know anything about camp, that's a five or six hundred dollar prize uh, for your kid to go to camp this summer. So, boy, enter the draw. Uh, we want to support Silver Lake. Uh, be here that Sunday. Prayer rally, April 29th. Uh, Mother's Day celebration service and a great senior spring lunch coming up. You can sign up for all those things uh, at the back. And have a special thing this morning if you could help us out with this. We've been four or five years into this, and uh, our directory is not quite up to date right now. If you'd like to be added to our directory, we have information from some of you to send you an email and things like that, but we are making one that is a little more public. Not, we're not sending it to the government. We're not sending it to the town. Public within our church, so you can track somebody down who's in your small group to send out a little directory. If you would do us a favor today and grab a communication card out of your chair, there's some at the back as well, fill that out. Uh, at some point in the morning, drop it in the box. We just want to update it. And if you, for some reason, want that information to just be kept in-house in our office and not spread around to the rest of the church, that's okay too, but please indicate that on the card. Uh, just want to keep, we change cell phone numbers every few years, some of us, and just want to keep that up to date. So if you could help us out with that uh, this morning, that would be really, really helpful. Awesome to have you here. If this is your first time here, I would love to meet you right after service at the table. I have a gift for you this morning. And uh, join in on service this morning. The guys are going to lead us in worship. Why don't you stand, shake somebody's hand, welcome somebody to church this morning. And Quinny Christian High School is going to lead us.
Good morning, everyone. We are the Quentin Christian High School group, made of grade 10s, 11s, and 12s, providing leadership this morning. We're going to play uh, five different worship tunes that we have in our repertoire. And if there is any of them that you may not know, we invite you just to sing with us as your heart leads you. And we promise that there'll be uh, it'll be a wonderful message and uh, that type of thing. And make sure that I uh, dismiss all of your wonderful children after the second song. And I don't just go into the third song because I tend to do that because I'm a little uh, space that way. All right. So uh, we are going to start with Sing to the King.
We have a baby dedication here today, and I'm going to ask Mitchell and Meredith to come on forward. Come on right up front here, guys. I'm going to try to avoid this microphone squeaking and get in the center a little better here. Let's welcome them as they come. We're clapping all morning here for stuff. <laughs> we have dedicated a lot of Hogsteins since our church is open. Really excited to dedicate uh, Elias to the Lord today, and I know you've got lots of family here and friends, relatives, and excited to do that. Uh, in our church, uh, we don't in particular uh, practice infant baptism, if you're familiar with things like that. Uh, we believe that uh, a person, a, a child, a teenager, an adult should be an active participant in this, and uh, I hate to say it, Elias may not remember this. <laughs> Uh, but we will, okay? And Mitchell and Meredith will. We're going to pray for them and pray for Elias. And I'm going to lead us through just a little liturgy this morning. We're going to pray a blessing uh, over him. We appreciate your family and your extended family today. And this is a special thing. Uh, I believe, I know lots of you do, I believe that people can come to know the Lord and have a relationship with Jesus when they're really young. And many of you can testify to that. And we want to be an active part of that uh, as a church and I'll lead you through a little liturgy, and I'm going to include our church in that this morning uh, as well. Mitchell and Meredith, you brought Elias, Kevin Hogstein, to whom God has given you to be dedicated to God and to his service. By this act, you testify to your faith in Jesus Christ and also your desire that Elias shall receive the benefits of consecration to God and of the prayers of the church and may early learn to know and follow the will of God and therefore may live a Christian life. In order for this to happen, it will be your duty as parents to teach them early the fear of the Lord, to watch over their education, that they may not be led astray by false teachings or doctrines, and to direct their minds to the Holy Scriptures as expressing the will and authority of God for all people, and to direct their feet to church community, to restrain them from evil associates and habits, and as much as you are able to bring them up in the Lord's discipline and instruction. Mitchell and Meredith, will you endeavor to do so with the help of the Lord and say, we will. We will. We will. Scripture says this, people bringing little children to Jesus, were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms and put his hands on them and blessed them. Now, Parkway Church, I'm going to ask you to be part of our ceremony today a little bit. I'm going to ask you to stand just for a little bit here leading into our worship time. 
Mitchell and Meredith are dedicating Elias to Jesus Christ. They've committed to be active in helping him grow in this relationship with Jesus. It has been said that it takes a village to raise a child, and the same is true with the church. It will take a family and a church to encourage a child to grow in their relationship with Jesus throughout her childhood and teenage years. When kids and grandkids are around, there will be messes. Can I get an amen? <laughs> and there will be noise. When teenagers are around, there will be larger messes and even more no noise. And this is a statement that we take really seriously at our church. In order for there to be hearts in heaven, there will be holes in church walls. For our own flesh and blood kids and grandkids, we endure these things and adapt to these things out of love, and as a family of God, we will do no yes, do no less. Will you join me and say yes to that mission as a church, to be a place where kids are welcome, where youth can thrive, and every generation can grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ together? And if so, say yes to that, Parkway Church. Yes. It's lovely to dedicate, and you can sit back down this morning. And we're going to dedicate Elias to the Lord. Elias means the Lord is my God. We're going to pray for Elias this morning and get some pictures here. I have made a few babies cry. This guy's doing pretty good. <laughs> you can extend your hand out if you want. You can pray along with, but we're going to pray for Elias, a special blessing in his life, all right? Let's pray together. God, I pray you would bless Elias. His name, Lord, is very similar to Elijah. It's the same meaning that the Lord would be his God. And Father, would you touch his heart and mind, help him from a young age to know you and to follow you all the days of his life. Keep him, Lord, from the enemy that would like to steal away the joy that you put in his heart and the Holy Spirit that you place in him. Bless him, God, from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. You got a preacher here. He's getting ready. <laughs> He's getting ready. Let's welcome Christ to the family. You guys, let's say it again, church. They're going to lead us in worship.
I'm going to invite uh, Pastor Rob McCollum to come up. He's pastor at Kingston Standard Church, and we do want to say thank you again, Rob. And I know uh, if this, in some roundabout way, our live stream gets to some of your people at some point, I want to say thank you to your church for, for hosting us. Uh, during our long COVID exodus there, uh, finally landing here. And uh, if you've been part of our journey for a few years, or if you've been part of uh, our Unite 101 uh, newcomer small group that we offer here, at some point we would have given you a little bit of a talk. Uh, it is our desire in the future to plant other churches across the Kingston region. And it takes a team of people to do that. And it's great to have several churches work together on that to see a new uh, church established in the greater Kingston area. That is a goal uh, ahead of us, and I wouldn't say it's a goal that we're rushing towards without uh, putting effort and thought and, and planning into that, and we've been working at some of those things, and over the next year or two, we hope to see some more things develop with that, uh, to see another church uh, come along, which is an exciting thing, and it's been exciting to partner with you with that uh, and some other networks around the city uh, and the region, and great to hear you preach today. Yeah. Pastor Rob. Let's Thanks. Welcome Rob. Yeah. I appreciate you getting the memo that it was blue shirt, gray pants day. It's awesome. I didn't know if there was a Wesleyan requirement on that or not, but uh, it's great to be with you all today, and uh, it's my honor to actually see your faces. Uh, I've seen your faces in a number of times when I've been praying for you coming into this time, not just today, but as we as we think about the whole journey uh, of planting this particular setting. And uh, it's been a long road, and it's very exciting to be able to share this time together with you today. And, and as we are a part of this, I, I trust that this will be a time where you'll allow some of the voices that are just kind of rolling around in your head, like, what am I going to do next? Or, you know, what is it I need to do later today? All of those kinds of things that happen. Sometimes there are voices like, you know, how could God ever use me? Or maybe sometimes there are voices like, uh, you know, I, I, the, my life is so messed up, there's no way that any of this is really going to ever work out. Like, I've, I've made so many mistakes, I've done so many things, the regrets can get large and huge. And, and so I trust that today in this conversation that God will minister to you in a way that draws you very purposely forward. And, and I believe that's what His Holy Spirit wants to do, is to give you an opportunity to be able to hear Him in a way that says, here's something that I really want to help us walk through together. Because ultimately, we're, we're here together because we recognize that we're choosing to partner with Jesus to be able to live life well. And so, ultimately, as we, as we talk about what we're talking about today, it's in that context of recognizing that living life well with Jesus is recognizing that He's, he's the senior partner in, in the process, and, and we're coming alongside of Him, and He's kind of helping us identify how that works. And so, as you're listening today to the voice of God, I trust that you'll be able to discern between some of the other voices that are a part of your journey and some of the things that are maybe even calling to you in the midst of the busyness of the day. Have you ever kind of had one of those moments where uh, you've said something, you, all of a sudden the words are coming out of your mouth, and almost as quick as they're coming out of your mouth, you wish that they were on a string? Because you'd like to pull them back, right? I mean, you'd, oh my goodness, I can't believe I said that. You know, there are times like that where you've just said stupid things, right? And then there are other times like that where you've said regrettable things. You look back and you go, man, what, what was I thinking? Where did that come from? How did I end up saying something like that? When I, when I was a teenager and into my young adult years, I had the privilege of working in, in a variety of tech situations and working with concerts and shows and a variety of uh, kind of larger settings like that. And so we're at a rehearsal for a, a fairly large show and the director is talking to the cast and I'm working in the tech team and I had this brilliant thought come into my mind and so I pressed the button on my uh, intercom and shared it with the entire tech team and as quick as I said it, I was like, that was the stupidest thing you could have ever possibly said. Not just stupid, but inappropriate. Like, what were you thinking? I can't believe I said that. I shared it with the whole tech team, 
And, you know, sometimes you've said those things and they just fall flat, and that's exactly what it was, right? Like, silence on the other end of the whole intercom. And we moved on to something else, and very graciously they did that. But sometimes when you've you've said those things, you've kind of gone, boy, if there was only a rewind button in life, there'd be some moments where I'd like to kind of pull that one out, or I'd like to erase that, or I'd like to have those on a string so I can pull them out of that whole situation. And you're wondering, what did he say anyway, right? You're all wondering, what did I say? I'm not going to tell you. Because I will never repeat what I said. But I've lived enough life to know that I'm not alone in that. There are some of you and some of all of us that have said things in the heat of the moment. And, and we've expressed stuff, whether it was meant as a joke or we, in the moment we kind of thought it was funny or you know, maybe it came out at work or to our family member, to a child. You may not have said it in a very public setting, but it may have been just a private kind of moment, whatever that moment was, whatever it is, you blurt it out, afterwards you may be thinking, did did I really say that? Did I really say that? Like, and if you could, you'd rewind those words. Because ultimately when it, it ventures into, whether it's stupid or judgmental or whatever the case may be, it goes into some kind of territory that you find can end up hurting people. And, and that's not what anybody that's here this morning really wants to be the legacy of their life. I mean, nobody woke up this morning and said, you know what, I hope that by the end of the day today, the words that I speak will injure everybody around me. Nobody woke up that way. But yet, there are times when that is what happens in life. And in that moment, we can all ask ourselves this same question. Where did that come from? Right? Where did that come from? I don't know where on earth that whole statement came out of me from. There's a good chance some of you have heard this particular image at some point or another along the way. There, there's, there's an image of walking around with, a, with an open beverage cup, right? And, and you've seen that. Maybe you're in a social setting and, and people talk about how there's this full cup of what's in the beverage and then all of a sudden your arm gets bumped and, and, and there's stuff that's spilled out. Maybe it's on you or maybe it's on the people around you. It's on the floor. Wh- wherever it may be, there's, there's a spill there and you all of a sudden feel responsible like, oh, I got I to gotta help clean this up and I'm sorry and let me pay your dry cleaning bill or, you know, let me, let me deal with, and, and you find yourself in those kind of moments, and, and I would suggest to you today, words are like that. When our lives get bumped, they reveal what's inside. Words spill out of us, and sometimes they get on people. They create a little bit of a mess. They, they sometimes get on us, and, and we're kind of wondering, like, Where did that come from? But someplace inside of us, that was revealed. And and I would suggest to you today that that's a bit of a gift. When our lives get bumped, it's a bit of a gift that God is giving us to be able to see what's really inside of us. When our words explode out of us and, and we're like, where did that come from? God's giving us a gift to see what's happening on the inside of us, that's what, what's been growing there and what's, what's been happening there. And, and ultimately, that's not fun to admit. Like, we kind of realize, okay, that's actually in there. Those words that are part of that hurtful path that happened, that are part of that silly path, that stupid path, whatever the case may be, when we get bumped in life, it, it came out. And so, when we think about what's inside, and we think about what we really want, we kind of have to come to the place where we ask ourselves, how does this even change? How do I create habits, and what what is it I need to look at, and how is it that I I see this revolutionized in my life in a way that doesn't create havoc and regret in the relationships and the people around us? That's what we all want, really, and and I think it's kind of a cool way that in in just a few minutes we're going to see how how the Apostle Paul expresses what we really do want in our lives. And he kind of shares in the context of this whole passage, which I'm going to encourage you to read on your own, but he really shares this in a way 
that helps us to see that, you know, there's, there's a part of this that God really wants to be part of. And, and He's our senior partner continuing to draw us in that kind of a journey. Today we're looking in the book of Ephesians, and if you have a Bible with you, feel free to open it to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 is this section that if you have a title on the, the section of this part of your Bible, it will say something like, you know, living well as a believer, like living in the light or living as a new person. And th- this is really the context. And, and this whole section, which again, I'm going to encourage you to read a little bit later, you'll find that Paul is giving these short burst statements. They're, they're just statements that say, let me show you how this all kind of fits together when your life is living in sync with where God is continuing to draw you. And, and as you're continuing to apply His truth, as you're continuing to apply His work in your life, this is what growing really starts to look like. And, and this verse that we're going to look at is, is tucked into a larger piece. You see it here on the screen. It's tucked into this larger piece about what it means to follow Jesus, not just like you followed Him like on social media, like, yeah, I like some of the things that He does, and I like a few of those things, and and those are kind of cool, and I'll select the things I like, and I'll leave out the stuff I don't like. No, no, no. Following Jesus is a little bit more like living as His apprentice, allowing the Scripture to be reorganizing our lives around His teaching. So that's really what Paul is giving us the context of here, and he says that ultimately, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Now, ultimately, when we think about it, that's what we want, but we know that there's something under the surface. There's stuff that's inside of us that sometimes kind of creeps up. It just shows up. It's stuff that gets spilled out. Sometimes it it could be our experiences, right? Things that happen to us in life, sometimes they they just kind of work and they emerge in moments where it looks like something that we've seen before or, or it looks like somebody that we've seen before. Sometimes our current habits and, and the inputs of our life can be influencing some of this. It can include our regrets, our hurts, our disappointments. All of these things are shaping us. And I think this verse really kind of starts with that assumption that, that something is actually shaping us. It's influencing us. It could be some of these things. It could be some other things. But there are realities to the fact that life is shaping us And God wants to shape us. Our experiences shape us as something that we're really familiar with. Like, for instance, I think about that as it relates to my habits in driving and how they've changed as a result of one teenager named Brian. Brian was a guy that I met. He was about 19 when I met him. And in one of our ministry settings, he had been a young driver And by the time I met him, his life had been absolutely cataclysmically revolutionized as a result of one single decision where he was getting ready to turn right, come out into traffic lane, and and the individual who was driving like this was was kind of, they had a right turn signal on, so he made the assumption that they were going to actually turn down the road that he was on, and he could pull out, and it would be safe to do that, but they'd just forgotten their blinker on. And they smashed into the side of him, T-boning him in exactly the driver door. And his cognitive and physical capacities were traumatically changed in the middle of that moment. And as a result of that, anytime somebody has their blinker on that's coming toward me when I'm making one of those kind of moves, I'm waiting till they commit. Now, there are experiences that you've had too, and there's, uh, there's moments like that that have kind of sh- changed the way that you operate. Hurts sometimes cause us to be more cautious or maybe even a little bit more bitter the next time around. Disappointments make us gun shy. Regrets can sometimes hold us back from taking the kind of healthy risks that we're designed to take, our habits, and we've talked about those already, and and et cetera. And they all influence 
the stuff that's under the surface, and they, and they kind of compile, they, they, they kind of create that whole list of stuff that when we're walking around in life, it's in the cup that's filled up, and when our lives get bumped, all of a sudden we get to see what's been happening. So Paul is helping us to see here in this passage and in the context, the greater context of Ephesians 4, that our words can be an indicator, a barometer of what's going on below the surface. And in a partnership with Jesus where we're His apprentice and learning, not just how to adopt like a belief system, but to see our lifestyle revolutionized by Jesus, it's really allowing Him to form us and shape us, then, then we partner with Him and say, you know, you know, this is what it means to live in the light, to allow this to be what comes from our lives instead of some of the other stuff that ends up kind of exploding out of us. I enjoy gardening a little bit. I enjoy eating the harvest. I don't mind planting. I like stepping back and seeing how it all plays out. And, and, and you know, the gardening thing, like, we, we, I'm not very good at it. I mean, we've just been trying our hand at it here over the last couple of years, and I have to admit, I'm, I'm the poster child for how not to do it, I'm sure. So, but there's a reality to when you finally come to the end of the season and you're, you're reaping some of the rewards of this harvest and, and you're eating some of these things that you're like, like I, I think I was amazed at how much better it tasted than even some of the stuff I was buying at the store. I was like, man, that's amazing. And some of you have had that experience before, right? Where you've grown your own uh, kind of, well, not grow your own, you know what I mean. You're growing your own vegetables, not growing your own anything else, right? Okay? Anyway, I like the planting. I like the harvesting. I like the eating. But I hate the weeding. I hate the weeding. The weeding, it seems like every time I step out, there's a new crop of weeds that are just kind of grown up and shown up all of a sudden, Right? And you kind of dig your way through, and you deal with them, and you get rid of them, and then all of a sudden, there's a whole new crop of weeds the next day. And so you keep working away at them. And, and I confess that in my early stages of gardening, I'm still sorting out which are the weeds and which are the actual plants when they're pretty young, right? So there's, there's a part of it that I'm not sure whether I should be pulling the weeds or whether I'm going to be harming what's really happening, and, and so I, I kind of get myself into that place where I'm like, okay, just let them all grow. Forget about it. And one year I did that, and it was a catastrophe. And you, if you've ever done that, you, you recognize just how much of a catastrophe it could be. And, and, and I would say that when it comes to words in our lives, they just, they just kind of keep coming up every now and then, right? They emerge from time to time. They, every now and then you see this new crop and you're kind of dealing with them and you, you look at the right situation and all of a sudden your life get bump, gets bumped and boom, now something else emerges and you're like, how did I know that was in there? Where did that come from? You know, our words are not just addressed this once in Scripture, right? I mean, uh, some of you have been around long enough to know that there's a number of places where the Scripture really talks about words. James mentions how words are decisive, like, like the bit in the mouth of a horse, how they're directive, like the rudder on a ship, how they're destructive, like a, a spark that sets a fire. The scripture talks about how words and, and the things that we speak, they share life, they share death, There's, there can be appropriate, they can be overused. I mean, who hasn't run into somebody who talks too much? But our words can be thoughtful, they can be thoughtless, they can demonstrate deep care, they can demonstrate disregard. And so where is it that they're all kind of, what, what's under there causing that to grow? I think, you know, King David kind of tickles at this a little bit when he says this in, in, uh, in Psalms chapter 19, verse 14. And maybe we have that for us here on the screen. It says, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing 
to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Jesus is much more direct, and He's quoted in the book of Luke, the latter part of verse 45 in chapter 6, when He says, what you say flows from what is in your heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. So when we ask that question, where did this come from, Jesus is kind of helping us to see, and David was kind of leaning at this, that this is kind of a heart issue for us. Paul gives us these short bursts of what it looks like in Ephesians chapter 4, and what he describes here in the latter part of chapter 29, he says, or chapter, uh, chapter 4 verse 29, he actually shares with us what I think we all want. But I would suggest to you that probably some of us today, when we think about this and we think, well, yeah, you know what, I need to, I need to fix my words, we, we, we might be approaching it, just maybe, a little bit like my very young and uncultured approach to gardening. Like, we like this moment here and we want to address it and so we kind of say, okay, there, Everything is planted and, it, and it's good. And then we walk away and then we're kind of frustrated that, you know, weeds are kind of cropping up from time to time. It's like we come to church and, and, and we believe that, you know, if we pray, it's like God's going to wave His magic wand or something or other and, and there's going to be like no more temptation and all the disciplines we need are going to be present in our lives and, and miraculously everything will be cleared up. And there certainly are moments when God takes our lives and revolutionizes what we have been and turns us into something that is absolutely unexpected in moments. But for most of us, we find ourselves in the very interesting and challenging journey, the rigorous journey of working through what's down in the bottom of the soil and what's still needing to get pulled out for weeds. Sometimes that has to happen in the context of a community and God gives us each other for that to happen, the vulnerability and the openness and the honesty of walking with like-minded people through discovering what it actually means to mess up. I said some things that I shouldn't have said. I wish I had changed the way that I was approaching this. This is not the right way for me to deal with this. I need to just talk this through with somebody. I need to be open with somebody. God gives us communities of people to be able to work through that. Sometimes our personal journey needs to include allowing Him to release disappointments and habits, hurts. Sometimes it's inputs that we're choosing. Anything that influences our thoughts and is continuing to form us on, on, in that deeper level. But that's messy vulnerable, difficult stuff. And when we really get down to it, like, sometimes we maybe look back and go, like I did that one season, like, ah, just let it all grow. It'll work out. It'll be okay. If I don't deal with anything, it'll be okay. But ultimately, we know, and I found out when it came to my gardening, that the weeds took over. And sometimes they do that, don't they? To a certain extent, we'd all like to get up from this moment and think that everything is fixed because we've heard this kind of a challenge and, and we've talked about this and we've, we've shared this together and, and, and now as we go out of here, our words are going to be different because we've been together. But the process of weeding our word garden, so to speak, is, is really a journey. And, and if you choose to read that first part of Ephesians chapter 4, what you'll find is Paul is talking about how sometimes, you know, bitterness and anger, sometimes our former way of life, sometimes entitlement, sometimes bad-mouthing others to protect ourselves. Sometimes there's a whole lot that's at the heart of creating these words, and these are some of the short burst statements that he's saying, living in the light, being like-minded with Jesus, continuing to grow in what it means to discover what God's doing on the inside, transforming what's spilling out of us. There's significant courage 
It's a part of being willing to go there when frustration hits, when we're hurt, when we're angry. We find ourselves in a moment where compassion is what's needed or maybe challenge. How do we respond? What's spilling out of us in the middle of those moments where we're bumped? Because those bumps are gifts that God is giving us to reveal what's been growing inside of us and how we need each other to continue to grow in the journey of seeing our word garden be as fruitful as it's designed to be in the kingdom of God so that no unwholesome talk comes out of our mouth, but only what is building, good for building others up according to their needs so that it may benefit those who listen, which ultimately is what, like I said, we all want. So, if you're someone who's here today who is willing to take that journey, and, I'm, and just very honestly, that's not going to be everybody. Let's consider just this question. When you think about the last week and your words, what have they been revealing? When you think about the last week and your words, what have they been revealing? And if this is a new part of the journey with Jesus for you, like, I guess this is really, to best describe this, this is a journey of saying, what habits do I need to let go of? What habits do I need to adopt in order to continue to allow God to work on the soil of my life, working in there and allowing in a partnership with Him to pull some of those weeds that are showing up as my life gets bumped? Because He's inviting us as a junior partner to partner with Him as the senior partner in that journey. And, and, and what He's maybe calling us to today is not easy because it may include an apology. It may include an admission. It may involve a release of something that's happened to us along the journey. It may include a healthy conversation. It may even include a request for help. And so this morning, as I pray, I trust you'll pray. Because, like I said when I started, God's in conversation with you. His Holy Spirit is sharing with you some thoughts. And I guess the question is, are these thoughts right now that, you know, are overburdening you by saying, uh, you know what, I'll never get this figured out. Because if that's the thought that is the conversation in your head, let me just assure you that's not, that's not the Holy Spirit that's drawing you toward that. That may be yourself, that may be the enemy. Either way, it's just the reality that God is drawing you toward something that will help you to take a next step with Him. Lord, we know we have to decide today, whether or not we're going to allow you to take a journey with us and, and to walk with you on this very, very challenging road of what it means to direct us toward the weeds that have been showing up. And as we just even think about this last week, there's, there's maybe some things that have come out of us, things that may be hostile, uh, things that may be kind of full of just pride, things that may be full of uh, statements that really are about trying to talk about others in order to make ourselves feel better about ourselves. God, would you help us let our lives live, as Paul has said here, in, in the light of your life, not in the shadows that we're so comfortable with living in. And it's not just to believe things about you, but to learn what it means to live like you. So we understand that happens as we allow your Holy Spirit to continue to coach us along the way, and you give us the courage to respond to what you are showing us today. And so we thank you for the honor that it is to see you at work in our lives and how our words can actually reflect the kind of life that Paul mentions is possible here because of your Holy Spirit working in us. And so we ask that you would help us to pay attention each day as our lives get bumped, 
as moments happen in our family, as moments happen at work, as moments happen that remind us of something that's happened a long time ago, whatever it is that's been shaping us, God, we thank You for that spill, and, and we pray that whatever it is that's been growing up under there, that You would have the honor of directing us in what it means to grow the Word Garden with the harvest you long for it to look like. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness to us today. Uh, you are beyond generous to even include us at all in your kingdom, and we thank you in your name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Rob, for sharing today. And let's thank Rob for being with us today as a guest. Yeah. That's great. Wonderful. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, church. Uh, there is a little reception. There's family and friends that are gathering uh, after service uh, for, for the dedication, some of the family members that are here. So that's sort of a private sort of function that's happening after service. So if you have kids in service today... You can stay out here as long as you want, sanctuary, the rest of the building, but we do have to set some things up there for that. Uh, so if you have some kids, if you can grab them a little sooner today, a little quicker, so we can do a little transition there into those things, that would be really helpful. Uh, fill out a communication card. That would be great. Pass it on. Your information, we'd love to keep you up to date and uh, work on that directory today uh, to help us connect together a little bit better in the near future. God bless you, church. Have a great Sunday. And I'll leave.